welcome to Limitless Church at Home. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. If it's your first time with us, welcome. We're gonna be having a message from our pastor, Dave, and then after that, stay tuned for some worship. We encourage you just to maybe grab some coffee, grab your family, sit back, and hear what God might be saying to you this morning. A few days ago, I went by our church in Thousand Oaks, California, and I had to grab some things, and as I pulled onto the campus, I was just so aware of how much I miss being together with everyone. I think all of us over the last few weeks with COVID-19 have become so aware of how important relationships are and how important gathering is. And so we really, really miss that. But we've also just been so amazed at how God has been able to take all of this and use it for good. Even things that the enemy is trying to throw at us and things that are not the will of God, things that are not in his heart, this illness is not in his heart, but we can see how he is taking all things and using it for good. He's bringing families together. We've heard reports of people sitting and watching church together, or being able to spend time with, with their family that they haven't been able to in a long time. Uh, we've also heard of people who have been able to connect with God in a way that they've never been able to before. Getting rid of all the busyness and all the craziness and being able just to focus has meant that they've gotten to know him in a new kind of way. So we pray that that is true for you this morning. But we do look forward to being able to meet together and gather together again one day soon. Next week starts a very special season in the life of the church. It's Palm Sunday and we encourage you to come and join us again at 10 a.m. Then the following week, um, Good Friday is on April the 10th and we will be streaming a very special service at 6 p.m. That's a time where we get to reflect on one of the most pivotal moments in history, the moment that God himself came in the form of Jesus and died on the cross for our sins. Then we get to, on Easter Sunday, April 12th, celebrate the fact that he didn't stay in the grave, but he actually rose to life again and what that means for you and I. So join in, make sure you stay tuned with all the things that we have going on. If you have any prayer requests, we really would love for you to send those into the number on the screen right here. Also, if you would like us to send you prayer prompts and encouragements each day at noon, just text the word PRAY12. Or if you want to receive our daily devotions, text DEVOS. A lot of people have also been asking how you can support the church during this time. And we just ask you to keep praying for us, keep praying for each individual, and especially the people who are struggling or have lost their jobs. But we also want to invite you to give if you would like to. It's obviously a hard time for everybody, and so we understand if you're not able to. But if you are, we just uh, invite you to give by following the instructions that are down in the description. Or we'll also have a step-by-step -step at the end of this video, so you can check that out if you'd like to give online, by text, or you can also mail in a check. God bless you, and we pray that this time is just a huge blessing for you and for your family. Don't forget to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share this message, um, as there are many people in need of encouragement right now. Good morning. It's so good to be with you today. Even though we're together in spirit and not physically able to be together, I want to bring to you this morning just a very simple message. My message can be summed up in one sentence. God is bigger than our problems. I know that all of us are facing a whole bunch of problems at the moment. But I want you to remember that God is bigger than our problems. Now, that idea came from a book that's been on my bookshelf for over 50 years. It's a little book that was written by J.B. Phillips, and it's entitled, Your God is Too Small. And what J.B. Phillips tries to do is he explains the different ways in which we box God in. He's actually got a chapter in this book entitled God in a Box. And he says there are a whole variety of ways in which we try to box God in. Because we want to control him. We want him to serve us rather than us serving him. So I've got one question that I'd like you to think about for the next few minutes. It's a very important question. 
It's a very profound question. And my question is, how big is your God? How big is your God? I heard someone recently saying, God is so awesome. And while I loved their enthusiasm, I wondered about the word that they had used, that God is awesome, because awesome is in fact a weak word. Awesome is a word that we have overused. We use it again and again and again. We talk about ice cream is awesome. We talk about my wife or my family is awesome. The Lakers are awesome. I agree with that person that God is awesome. But I want to read to you just one verse from Psalm 145. Chapter uh, verse 3. God is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. God is great. God is really, really big. 2,000 years ago, there was a man by the name of Paul. Paul was possibly the greatest Christian who had ever lived. And Paul once paid a visit to the city of Athens in Greece. Now Athens was the center of thought and debate and knowledge and discussion. And when Paul visited Athens and the people of Athens, he wrote these words. And they come from Acts chapter 17, verse 24 through verse 28. He says, The Lord who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and doesn't live in temples built by human hands. In other words, you can't put God in a box. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, God himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And God did this so that they would seek him, perhaps reach out for him, and find him though he is not far from any of us and and, and, the, and the best verse of all is verse 28 for in him we live and move and have our being i want to go back for a moment just to verse 27 which says even though he is not far from any of us. My wife's name is Sharon. We've been married for just over 50 years. A few days ago, Sharon and I went and bought groceries. After the groceries, we went for a bit of a drive because we didn't feel like getting back into the house again and closing the door. A few minutes after we arrived home, Sharon said to me, I've, I don't know where my, my reading glasses are. She said, I don't know if I left them in the grocery store or maybe I left them in the car. Or, and she said, would you help me? And so we searched the whole house. I went outside and looked all over the car, looked down but between the seats. I looked in the back seat where all the groceries had been. Couldn't find it at all. And then probably about half an hour later, Sharon suddenly said, Oh, I found them. They were sitting on top of her head the whole time. That's what that one verse reminds me of. God is not far from any one of us. How big is your God? God is very, very big. And he's got a huge heart. I wish you were here now. 
because I'd love to be able to point to each of you and say, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. But I'm looking right at you now and I'm saying that God loves you and God is very, very big. A few days ago, I was listening to a sermon by Bill Johnson and in that sermon, there was just one sentence that Bill spoke. And it just burnt its way into my mind. Bill said, we need to stop being impressed by the size of our problems. And we need to start being impressed by the size of our God. What a powerful, powerful verse. We need to stop being impressed by the size of our problems and start being impressed by the size of our God. That has worked its way around my mind for the whole of the last week. And I want to share with you just three thoughts that come out of it. And my first thought, my first point is stop being impressed by the size of your problems. All of us have got problems. And often all we see is our problems. Do you remember Elisha, the prophet from the Old Testament? He had a servant by the name of Gehazi. And one morning, Gehazi got up, he walked out of the tent and he was dismayed because as he looked, he realized that all of the, of the troops were surrounded by the enemy. He ran back inside and he said to Elisha, come quickly, come quickly. We are completely surrounded. Elisha prayed a simple prayer. He said, Lord, please open his eyes so that he can see your glory. And that's exactly what happened because as Gehazi went outside again, he looked and yes, the enemy were surrounding them completely. But beyond that was the army of God who was surrounding the enemy. Unfortunately, Gehazi chose to look at the problem first. I also thought, and I think Tersha spoke about this last week, and they did this as a Sunday school lesson. But I thought of the spies that went into the promised land. They sent 12 spies. 10 of them came back and they said, it's a terrifying place. All we saw were giants and we seemed like grasshoppers to them. Two of them, Caleb and Joshua, came back and they said, yes, there were giants but we can overcome the land. Unfortunately, the people chose to listen to the 10 spies and they all they could see were the problems. Do you remember the story of David? David faces Goliath. And as he looks at this huge, massive guy, he doesn't say, oh man, he's so big, I'll never be able to beat him. What David says is, he's so big, I will never miss him. When I use my slingshot, he's so big, I'm going to hit him. Don't focus on your problems. Don't allow your problems to become huge. I'm reminded of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Before Jesus was born, she was a, a very young teenager. She was not married, she was a virgin. And one day an angel comes to her and says, Mary, I've got wonderful news for you. You're gonna become pregnant and you are gonna give birth to the savior of the world. Now, to Mary, that could possibly have seemed like a huge, huge problem. But I want you to notice that she doesn't allow this problem to to become huge and big. What we read in Luke chapter 1 verse 46 is Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. 
The word magnify means simply to make big. I will do, Mary is saying, whatever I need to in order to make God big. How big is your God? I know that many of you are facing problems at the moment. I know that for many of you, your 401k has become a 201k. I know that some of you have had to close down your businesses. I know that some of you are facing the possibility that you might lose your job pretty soon. We've all got problems, but we mustn't focus on the problems. Stop being impressed by the size of your problem. How big is your God? I told you I was going to come back and ask you that question many times. I'd love you to say these words with me. God is bigger than my problems. Will you do that? God is bigger than my problems. Come on, just once more. God is bigger than my problems. The second thing that I want to say is stop being, start being, start being impressed by the size of your God. Start being impressed by the size of your God. So often we limit God, we contain him, we, we want to control him. But listen to what Paul says in Acts chapter 17, verse 24. God doesn't live in temples made by human hands. In other words, he's saying clearly, we cannot take God and put him in our little man-made boxes. J.B. Phillips says that we very often box God in our denominations. I heard a friend of mine, a very good friend, speaking about exactly that a long time ago. And he spoke about the fact, that, let, let me relate it to you in my own words. I was raised a Methodist. I was 16 years old. I loved the Methodist church. I actually believed that God was a Methodist. Sure, he liked all the other churches, but he loved the Methodist church more than any. And on a Sunday morning, we would get together and we would do what we used to call the hymn sandwich, where you had a hymn and a prayer and a hymn and a Bible reading and a hymn and a sermon and a hymn and go home. I loved that church. And I got to know God very well through the Methodist Church. But one day, a friend of mine surprised me by inviting me. This guy's name was Horton Bennett. And Horton invited me to go to his church, which was Assemblies of God. Now, you know what the Pentecostals are like. Hey? For 50 minutes... They stand and they sing chorus after chorus after chorus. No wonder they fall down. And then for 50 minutes, somebody gets up and preaches a long, long sermon. And after they finish that sermon, for 50 minutes you have a time of prayer and healing. I went with him to his church. Many of the things were quite strange to me. But God was in that church as well. Shadon and I were once invited to attend an Anglican church because friends of, my, of ours were having their, their, their daughter christened. And you know what the Anglican church is like. All the bells and the smells and the robes and all of the formality. We went along there. I was quite skeptical. But I'll be honest with you, God was in that church as well. Because you see, God is bigger than our denominations. He's bigger than all of our problems. God is very, very big. How big is your God? I hope you're still thinking about that question. The third thing I want to say is 
you need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. It's so easy at a time like this for us to throw up our hands and say the sky is falling. We're never going to get over this. No, we need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I came across something written by a man by the name of Donald McGrath. Donald McGrath said, Our greatest sin is that we trivialize God. We are in danger of losing our reverence for him. Those are very sobering words. We trivialize God. God is very, very big. This last week, I heard a story that was told about a man by the name of Ed Silvozo. Ed Silvozo is a preacher, but he's also on the board of a very prestigious Christian school. Ed discovered that many of the parents of the students that went to that Christian school loved what the school was teaching. They loved their philosophy of life. They loved the way that they educated children. But yet they, as the parents of those children, many of them just were not believers. They liked the education, but they didn't get involved in anything else. Ed says about three weeks ago, the school was closed and everybody started doing online education. He said a strange thing happened. Suddenly many of the parents were at home with their children, their students, as online lessons were being given. And he said he started getting phone calls, not complaining about what was being taught, but asking questions about what was being taught. Could you, could you help me to understand this? Could you help me with that particular thing? And he said in a very strange way, God was working through this difficult situation in order to bring about change. I sense a new reverence for God is beginning to emerge. I want you just for a few moments to listen to the words of the song that is going to be played and sung and think carefully about those words. From the highest of heights, the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable awestruck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God who is to Every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun it gives source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by day You are amazing God All-powerful, untamable Awestruck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim 
You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing. See the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You see the depths of my heart, and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. Can I ask you that question again as I close? How big is your God? When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thought that comes into your mind? Is it, good Lord, morning? Or is it, good morning, Lord? I hope it's, good morning, Lord. Because, you see, we don't have to worry about what's happening in our worlds, our churches, our places of employment, our families, our schools. We don't have to be paralyzed by fear. We simply need to remember three simple things. Stop being impressed by the size of your problems. Start being impressed by the size of your God. And thirdly, become part of the solution to what is happening at the, at the moment and be a part of God's army. I mentioned my wife Sharon a few moments ago. Once I'd written out my sermon, I went to Sharon and I said, does this sound okay? And I just kind of ran through it with her. And she listened very carefully. And once I'd finished, she said, Dave, that's great. It's all about believing God's promises, trusting God's goodness, and being surrounded by God's glory. I think she should have preached the sermon. Friends, we are praying for you a whole lot. There's not a day that goes by that we don't pray for you, your family, your loved ones, and your friends. We believe in, at Limitless Church that God is going to use everything that's happening at the moment in awesome and incredible ways. Will you join me as we pray together? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you to you that you are with us, that you are so much bigger than our problems. As Paul said, there is nothing that will ever be able to separate us from the love that is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Father, we thank you for that. We thank you that you are greater than our problems. I pray your blessing on every person who is watching this broadcast at the moment. That you will give to them right now, right now, Lord, a deep sense of the presence of your Holy Spirit in their lives. That your Holy Spirit will bring change for the good. As Paul said, all things, all things work for the good of those who believe in God and are called according to his purposes. 
God bless you. Amen. Welcome, Limitless Church. We hope that message by Pastor Dave was encouraging for you. Uh, right now, we just invite you to worship with us. Uh, usually, we're used to worshiping in big groups corporately, uh, but I've found that some of the most profound times of worship have been where I'm either alone or in a really small group of people. You know, actually, David set the example for us in the Old Testament, and God said he's a man after his own heart. And when David was out in the fields with the sheep, he was worshiping God. So while you're at home, either alone or with your family, I just invite you to worship with us. Uh, just engage God, just to press in. So Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're above all sickness. We thank you that you're above all turmoil, that you're above all fear. Lord, we love you so much. We worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. No point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of life And as you speak A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planet the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you Billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say, every painted sky, a canvas of your. If creation still obeys you, so will I. So will I. So will I. Salvation, you chase.
chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created, light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you A hundred billion failures disappear Where you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you so alive I could see your heart in everything you've done Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure would amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind.
give life You are love You bring light to the darkness You give hope You restore every heart that is broken Great are you, Lord It's your
we just declare that today you're great. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're good. We love you. We lift you up today. Amen. I just remembered something I heard a few days ago um, that Jesus speaks the language of faith, whereas the enemy speaks the language of fear. And so when we hear God's voice, it always leads us to faith in him, to trust in him. But the enemy is the one who speaks fear into our minds, into our hearts. And right now, I think all around the world, so many of us are facing fear. And it's okay to be afraid as long as we don't allow that fear to stop us in our tracks or make us retreat. But that fear should actually drive us towards the Lord to where we go, no, we need your faith. That fear, we should not fear because you are God, because you are the God who takes care of us. You are the God of promises. And so we just pray that today that you'll be able to continue worshiping, whether you're you know, with your family, if you're doing chores around the house, whatever you're doing, continue just in this attitude of worship, allowing God to speak faith, speak the language of faith, and that your words would become a language of faith to other people. So we just pray that blessing over you. We pray that you would just be encouraged today and that you'd be able to continue to worship this great and powerful God. We love you guys. If you would like to be part of what God is doing at Limitless Church by giving financially, there are three ways to do so. First, you can text the amount you want to give to the number 84321. You'll then receive a reply with a link. Click on that link and you'll be able to enter your credit card information. You'll only need to do this one time and the next time you want to give, just text the amount you want to give. The second option is to give online by going to our website, limitlessgod.church give or clicking on the give button at the bottom of any of our pages. You'll then be able to enter your details you can also select whether you want this to be a one-time gift, or you can set up recurring donations. Or you can just send a check to Limitless Church at 750 Herbs Road, Thousand Oaks, California, 91362. All of our donations are prayed about carefully. You can also request a copy of our financial statement from our church office. Thank you so much for prayerfully giving.